to pawnbroking. Oh, wow. That's a big rock, isn't it? Prestige are a cut above. It's absolutely stunning. A lot of money here. Where the well healed. I love luxury and I love expensive things. Exchange their luxury goods. Such a naughty car. Naughty, naughty, naughty. But I watering amounts. A hundred thousand pounds. What? The man behind it all. Georgia. Is entrepreneur James Constantino. I like dealing in unusual items, but the ones I'm most interested in are the ones that make me the most money. The figure I've got to is a hundred grand. Incredible. This time, look at this little beauty I've got for you. A tempting tiara. This is so desirable. Looks in fantastic condition. A precious piece of pop art. So, what do you think of the table? Here we go. Here it's we go. Absolutely stunning. And James is pushed to the limit. It is a great car when it gets going, you know. I just like sitting in it. Welcome to the world. Another happy customer of Posh Paul. High end pawnbroker James. Hi, everyone. Hello. Is a stickler for making sure his team are always right on the money. Just having a little look round. James does love keeping us all on our toes. He just wanders around pretending that he's not doing much, but secretly he's spying on us as he walks around. No matter what you do or where you are, James will know what you're doing. Lovely. I think this is about... Yeah, I think that gets everything covered. Oh no, another email from James. Dear team, just a quick note to announce that as part of ongoing process, I will be carrying out random tests, which may include the appraisal of various items. He basically wants us to make him a tea. It's proven more and more difficult to keep an eye on everyone, and I'm a bit worried that they might be veering off the track, if you like. In order to get them back on the tarmac, is you have to set them little tasks. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like I'm going back to school. I mean, look, the test isn't going to be all about let's look at a diamond. It's going to be various tests to put them through their ability. I don't mean he's bored. I mean, there's that one where you have to touch your nose, for example, which is always a good test. Um, I like that one particularly. So coordination is the number one skill. This morning in Weybridge, it's James's own skills that are being put to the test. Entrepreneur Paul is on his way to the pawn shop, hoping for a deal on a family heirloom. Hi. Hey, hello there. Hello. Um, I've got a meeting with James scheduled. Oh, yes, it's a deal coming in. I'll, I'll let you in. Many thanks. How are you doing, Paul? Hello, James. How are you, mate? Very good. You got my email? Yeah, I've got your email. Excellent. I'm also all excited. Grab a seat. So what, you, what have you been up to? Well, i um, been focusing on a number of things, but one of which is getting my own business set up. Yeah. So the reason I'm actually sitting in front of you here is because uh, I have an item which I'm hoping is going to be enough to secure a loan for the period of time I need to get the business set up. OK, and what are you looking to raise? I'm looking to raise around £40,000. OK, fantastic. So let's have a look at what you've got. Tell me what you've got. So the first thing I'll say is, James, I want this back. You um, want it back? This is security for a loan. OK, cool. Uh, what I have is a combination diamond tiara uh, and necklace. OK. Wow. This is, uh, this is pretty special, to be honest with you. Aesthetically, it's just beautifully put together. Yeah. Um, and it looks absolutely stunning. It's really nice to hear uh, you saying that. Lovely. OK, all right. Well, thanks for coming in. I shall let really you crack on. Really appreciate it, James. And uh, we will get to work with it. That's great. Focus on this. One, and then two. Lovely. Beautiful. Breathe. In his spare time, 53-year-old Paul practices martial arts. This is the beginning of the class. We're basically just doing a warm-up. Um, it does involve getting hit. Oh, nice. 
but it's not about um, hurting, it's about actually learning to get relaxed. After a while, getting hit doesn't bother you. Relax. You get used to it and you stop fearing it and you can relax and you can move and you can become very effective. After a training session, um, I have to say I feel incredibly relaxed. Your body. Despite the fact I, I might have had a, a, a really good thumping. When I'm firing my catapult, you know, this is quality time. Paul's other passion is a little less hands-on. I guess very similar for people playing golf or target shooting or, or any other sport. But for me, you know, this does it. And uh, there are millions of people around the world that feel exactly the same thing. Very satisfying. Ever since I was a kid, I was uh, using them. It was one of my dad's hobbies. He was brought up in Jerusalem in the 1930s and you were good at two things then, football and using a catapult. Now Paul has found a gap in the catapult market. I started off developing them about six years ago and now I have the final product. It's pretty much unique. There's nothing similar on the market in terms of how it's manufactured. It's just a basic catapult but with a number of very clever design features on it. So it locks your hand in place, it ensures that you can get much more power out of the bands and much more accuracy. We're now ready to go into production. I just need to raise the funds. He's hoping to secure a loan against the piece of antique jewellery. It's a diamond tiara. It, apparently it's, it dates back to the 1880s. It belonged to my great-great-grandmother. It's stayed with the family since. This is in, taken in Victorian times when it was very uh, um, fashionable to go to a photography studio. And um, that lady on the right is uh, Elsa Ansel, who was my great-great-grandmother. As you can see, she really does look like a bundle of laughs, but um, I guess that's Victorian ladies for you. To be honest, I'm not really sure she'd approve of the business or the fact that I'm putting up uh, jewellery as a deposit for this, but um, it's not for sale and I absolutely intend to get it back. Just to get things up and running, I'm going to need between 30 and 40,000 um, pounds. I believe its value is certainly in the tens of thousands and I'm hoping to um, ensure that that's enough for James to lend me the money that I need to get this business off the ground. But will the diamond tiara be worth enough to raise the £40,000 loan Paul needs? Good afternoon, how are you? I've got a couple of rings you might be interested in. James is drawn to anything with an engine, and at headquarters he's been contacted by a fellow petrol head. I've just had an inquiry from a woman called Christine. She's got into track racing and she's gone out and bought this little radical track car, which is like a Formula One racing vehicle, and she hairs round in her spare time at these track and meeting, you know, these events. And uh, she's been into it for a number of years. She basically, basically, I think she uh, wants to sell the vehicle now. She's had her fun with it. I love my cars. I mean, as you may have guessed, it's my thing. But uh, I can't wait to get down there and try it out. Wow. It's a Triumph Daytona. It's like being in a sweet shop. 60-year-old racing fanatic Christine doesn't limit herself to just four wheels. Well, everybody's got a, a passion in some respect, haven't they? And mine's fast cars and speed. What type of thing are you looking for today, then? Well, I was looking at a bike that I could race around okay, the track. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. No. Jim, jump on that, see what you think. Do you mind? Have a little sit. No, not at all. That is good, isn't it? Yeah. This is straight up my street, yeah. I can tell you. Excellent. I absolutely adore it. This is coming up really well. I didn't realise that this will get off every tiny little mark and scratch. Brilliant. I was bought a track day by a friend and had such a great time. It got me really into 
doing track days. Two years ago, Christine spent £37,000 on the Radical. This model holds the record for the fastest lap time at the famous Nürburgring in Germany. I think I've been up to about 140, 160 in it around Alton Park. It feels amazing. Your whole body pushes back in the seat. And the first time I went out in it, my shoulders and my uh, elbows were actually bruised because I was throwing, be throwing myself around so much in the car until I got used to it. There's plenty of people much older than me that do track days. Uh, and I think you're only as old as you feel, aren't you? I know it's an old cliche, but that's the, that's the case. Union Jack Wallies. Christine's hoping to sell the race car for £30,000 so she can renovate her 19th century barns. This has got to go because it's worn out. Well, this is my tyre that I'd normally use for training. Normally just pop it down on the floor. So, squat. I normally flip the tyre in a much more elegant way than that. This is um, just one of the barns that's been cleared. The beams are, are, you know, obviously all original and really quite nice. Lots of space, I think. It's going to be good. It's going to cost a great deal of money just to get the infrastructure of the buildings right. So I'd very much hope that selling and parting company with a radical will help to start paying and supporting some of those massive costs, even though I love driving it. Good afternoon, thanks for speaking, how can I help? Pawn shop boss James is about to get the first staff appraisal underway, starting with his longest serving team member. Lawrence. Yes, James. You got a sec? Yeah, well, I've got, always got time for you, James. <laughs> now, you know you've got these appraisals coming out. Everyone's got these appraisals. Oh, yeah. You've got six pieces of paper here. Yeah. You've got 20 seconds. Could you load that stapler up with those staples and staple that those sheets together in 20 seconds? Yes, James. Just say when to start. On your marks. Ready. Get set. Now. Slowly. Are you timing it, James? Yeah, I'm looking at your watch. Here we go. Done. <laughs> it's not a very good stapler, is it? Have you picked a sort of dodgy stapler? Now let's wait for that to all fall apart, James. I failed, didn't I, James? Cheers, Lawrence. Thanks for coming in. That's all right. So when will we be discussing my wage increase? Yeah, well, I don't know about that. Extra holiday time? Yeah, it'll have to be a single-page dossier, dossier due to the lack of stapling. Hello, Sandra speaking. How can I help? Um, have to see if I can headquarters. Help. Designer handbag expert Claudia has received an email that's touched a nerve. This is such a sad story. Dear James and Claudia, my wife lost her battle with cancer last year and in a clear out prior to moving my father-in-law found this unusual handbag allegedly donated by Dame Shirley Bassey. There's the signature inside the bag. We believe it to be genuine and my father-in-law would like to sell it and give all the proceeds to the Phyllis Tuckwell Hospice in Farnham who helped my late wife. This is a really sad story and it's really close to my heart because I lost my cousin who was like my sister uh, to breast cancer um, seven years ago so it's, uh, it's still very fresh so I'm feeling quite emotional already to be honest. I've got lots of sort of hobbies and things I get involved in. Retired NHS manager Robin lives in Fleet in Hampshire. I started off at college as an engineer, electronics, radio. I've always loved anything to do with flying, um, model aircraft, model helicopters. 
my old Jet Ranger up there. It's um, very old, actually. It will fly again. We'll, we'll get that flying very soon. Before she passed away, Julie left Robin a very special gift. My Christmas present from Julie was my flying lessons, which was just a wonderful thing to do and completely unexpected. OK, good look around. Good to go. Close the throttle. Flying something I've always wanted to do, but um, this is my first opportunity to actually go and fly myself and control the aircraft, and it's, it's absolutely brilliant. I'm getting used to it. You are, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. all coming together really nicely. Bullpar, bring the nose up. It's, it's definitely a drug. The more you do, the more you want to do. That was really very good. After landing checks, please. A love of the skies was a shared passion of Robin and Julie's, who was working for an airline when they met 40 years ago. She um, used to uh, have a, a flat in the flats above an office where I worked, and uh, one morning this um, MGBGT was parked in my parking space. So I waited to see who the owner was thinking, yeah, I'm going to tell them what to do. And this beautiful BCAL uniform appeared. And uh, we chatted and I said, you know what, you can park in my space any time you like. She had two operations and um, we thought they were successful. And then discovered that the cancer had come back again and uh, tried various drugs, various treatments, but um, Nothing was really successful. So, um, she didn't have any more treatment and the Phyllis Tuckwell people looked after her. Phyllis Tuckwell is the hospice that helped Julie in her final days. She was here at home and um, they were absolutely fantastic. Even down to the little things, like um, one of the ladies was, was giving Julie a, 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 a clean and she said, um, have you got her favourite perfume, her body lotion? I hadn't even thought of that being a man. And um, she got her Chanel number no. five body lotion. Sorry. Come on, have a set. Robin and Julie's dad, I'm Brian, are keen it. to show their support so we're hoping to sell Julie's mum's signed Shirley Bassey bag. In respect to my daughter's uh, departure, we thought that because of the wonderful treatment she had from the hospice, that we would like to sell it and make the contribution to the hospice. I mean, if we could raise 500 pounds, that would be brilliant. It's so sort of outrageous that I can see one of her fans being delighted to have that. With the, with the signature as well. Hopefully good gift for a lady, but certainly I don't think it's very appropriate for me. <laughs> <laughs> Jewellery expert Ian is on his way to headquarters to appraise catapult entrepreneur Paul's antique diamond tiara. It's always nice when Ian pops in. I mean, look, we've got guys at the front, uh, gemologists, they're well versed in dealing with this sort of stuff, but it's always nice to have a second opinion, especially on an antique piece like this. Um, and another set of, of eyes look over it. It's just a bit of insurance for us. Good afternoon. How are you? You all right? You all right, Ian? Thank you. How are you doing? Hi, James. <laughs> you all right? You okay, yeah. It's right nice and warm out yes. there. It's a bit chilly, it's isn't it? freezing. It's absolutely freezing out there. Look at this little beauty I've got for you. Mmm. you like that? You know, this is so desirable. Mmm. Oh, nice quality diamonds. I mean, they're good sparkle, good life to them, and beautifully set. 
It's a special occasion thing, isn't it? I would have thought. I'm going to pop it. I don't in. think I'd bear that the fish and chip shop. <laughs> you queue up for a savoy with that tiara on, you'll get nicked. Honestly. Mm, I wish I would. <laughs> yeah. It's Edwardian. And that period was so elegant. Fantastic. Okay. All right, well, it's a small good. size. That's the only disadvantage it has. So the negative is that it's quite small. It is yeah. actually, isn't it? If you look at that next size, it's like 14 and a half inches. So you may have to extend it. Right. Okay. Lovely, Ian. Well, yes. thanks for coming in. See you later. Okay, my darling. Well, yeah. take care. Bye -bye. Okay. Be good. Have a good afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Take it easy. Thank you. Bye. All you hard-working girls, oh. Well, look, Ian's confirmed what we believe, that it's of great quality. Is it a 40 gram piece? I don't know at this stage. We need to do a little bit more work, and we're going to try and get as close to the 40 grand as we can. Art is a vital part of the pawn shop's business. Expert Lawrence's latest inquiry is a contemporary classic. This has just come and it really interests me. I really love my street art. And it's a piece by an artist called Louette, who's a sort of between Andy Warhol and street art. I've never seen a table. Um, and it's absolutely amazing. I love it. Right, you're going down. It's just one of those sports you don't really want to admit to being good at. <laughs> Everyone instantly thinks you're a... You haven't got a girlfriend in your... <laughs> Bit of a geek. The piece of modern pop art belongs to 30-year-old aspiring DJ, Simon. Now we're getting What's at it. What's happening here? Uh, me and my brother, Matthew, aren't really that competitive. I feel like a bit more healthy competition between us would be good. I suppose I just win most things, so it's fine. <laughs> That's game then, game. <laughs> Congratulations. Hello. Are we going to the record shop in a bit? Yeah. I suppose my passion for music kind of started when I was younger. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Hi, yeah. And for me, I suppose DJing was a natural progression from that. I've always been brought up on funk and soul and disco. Uh, my dad used to DJ as a kid. If you see anything decent, just let me know. All right. All right, where's the funk? Over there. I've been kind of DJing for the last couple of years, mainly kind of just like small sort of family parties and like friends parties and stuff like that. I see Simon play a few times. He's, uh, he's really good. Watch what you say. <laughs> <laughs> to take his DJing to the next level, Simon wants to sell the table. I'd like an EPA system so I can take all of this on the road. Um, I've kind of been DJing at a few pubs and places recently. Um, and most of them kind of expect you to bring your own stuff, so I'm hoping to invest in that and kind of take it on the road more often. A new PA system probably set me back about five grand. I'm hoping for something in between sort of three, four thousand pounds in the region of three and four grand would be ideal. Quite an expensive habit to have, or hobby, should I say. I know Louette for quite a few years now. We actually went to school together. Um, I was in the same art class as him and he gave me the table as a present. Essentially, it's a cable drum, which has been cut off, uh, and you've got car jacks as the feet. Louette's work can be found at the UK's best street art events and the Houses of Parliament. I suppose over the last five or so years, um, his career's been kind of getting, kind of going from strength to strength. He's been doing quite a few big shows and stuff, and I kind of thought, mm, maybe I've got something here that's actually worth quite a bit. I'm hoping he doesn't find out, but yeah, to be honest, I think he'll probably be all right with it. James is en route to Silverstone to meet petrol head Christine and test her high performance race car. You know, you've got to understand that when you're lending against these assets and you're talking about sums of 35, 40 grand, you've got to know that they perform and they're functioning properly. And that's one of the reasons I do come out and try these vehicles out. It's a little bit wet out there, but we'll take it steady for the first lap or two. And uh, then we'll, we'll hit the pedal hard. 
Christine, hi. How are you? How nice are you? to meet you. Yeah, nice I'm to meet right. you. A bit cold. Your yeah, hands are cold. I know, it is cold. Have you been it? tinkering away in here? Yeah, yeah, we're just checking everything over and then hopefully we can fire it up and see if we can get out. Lovely. Well, look, tell me about what these are. An SR8 radical. It's a, it's a radical SR8, 0 to 60 in. Um, 2.6 seconds or thereabouts. That's quick. It's quick. Okay, and how much is a new version of this car? No, they don't make the SR8 anymore. Uh, a new version uh, would be about £66,000. Fantastic. Look, the car looks absolutely amazing, so hopefully um, all being well. I mean, the weather's terrible today, but it'd be nice to get it out there. Well, let's try and get it out, even though it it's, might be a bit slippy out there, but let's give it a go. It all adds to the fun, doesn't it? I know. <laughs> The car looked absolutely superb and it's built for the track and that's where it needed to be. I couldn't wait to put it through its paces. S sort myself out. This is David, is it? Mm. Does he remind you of anyone? No. Oh, Pete Waterman. <laughs> well, you know, great to have Pete on board. I think he phoned Louis Walsh for a bit of advice at one point. You've got some clout, haven't you? You've got Pete Waterman helping you out. <laughs> oh, yes. There we go. Isn't it annoying? Me and Christine pulled out into the pit lane. We were heading towards the track and it just fell apart. We'll just tell them we've had a lovely time. <laughs> they won't know. It's a good job you've got a good sense of humour, James. Now? Yep. No, it's not going to go, is it? Oh dear. I did feel sorry for Christine, she tried her best, she really tried to get the thing going, but at the end of the day we were sat out there like a couple of lemons. <laughs> and it is a great car when it gets going, you know. Yeah, I just like sitting in it. Oh well. Christine, that was a little bit of a disappointment. I know. But I know. Once, it's, uh, once you get the problem sorted out with it and you find out what's wrong, We'll chat again, and yeah. uh, in the meantime, we can still do some work on the numbers. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thanks for today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you Been very much. Cheers. Thanks. I'm very disappointed. Of all days, it's happened today. I don't think it's put a dampener on the deal. I just think it would have been nice to have had the whole experience. If we're going to have any chance of selling it and bring a buyer to the table, it's going to be, need to be on the button. There's no doubt about it. No one's going to give 30 to 35 grand for something that doesn't actually work. And at this moment in time, it doesn't actually work. shop boss James takes staff appraisals very seriously <sighs> but not as seriously as chief operating officer Deborah oh James <laughs> come in take a seat what are you doing come in take a seat we need to have a little chat right tell me what you think about this talk me through what this is this. what's it made from this is um silver colored Hold on. Don't rush me. All professionals will keep both eyes open. Really? Mm-hmm. I can't do that. I can't keep both <laughs> eyes open. That's, no, you need to just practice. Really? Yeah. After that appraisal, I thought to myself, would I employ James Constantino? And the answer would be yes. It's Georgian. 
Georgian, yeah. Probably late Georgian, yeah. No, mid Georgian. Well, I did say, I did think to myself, probably mid to late. <laughs> has sent the Luet pop art table to specialists Ben and Katia for valuation. My only concern about it, he's a great artist, a big selling artist and actually really up and coming. However, it is a coffee table. I don't know, does that add to the value or detract from the value? So Ben and Katia will tell me. Hello Ben, how are you? Oh, hi Lawrence. Thanks for storing the table oh, for us. Oh, pleasure. No, yeah, I'll take you on through, it's in the studio. Oh, fantastic. Hi Kat. Hi, Kat. Nice to see you. Hey, good to see you, Lawrence. <laughs> All right, so what do you think of the here table? Here we go, here it's we go. absolutely stunning. Yeah. Such a one-off, really, really rare piece from Louette here. Really, really interesting. Mm. And it, it's also, it's hangable on the wall as well. As, oh, right, as a piece so you've got both options. Yeah, you've got both options. Um, and he's produced one of the best pieces I've seen by him. Um, on a disused cable drum. There, there's lots of uh, my youth, and I'm, I'm sure your youth, the, the, the iconography. My youth in black and white. Completely black and white. <laughs> Charlie, Ch Ch Charlie Chaplin on there. Yeah, Charlie Chaplin, you know, all the sort of Keystone Cops on there, all, yeah. all the sort of things I, I grew up with I don't as a know, child. I don't know what that is, though. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, but no, it, 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 it's great fun, it's a brilliant piece. Um, and we're hearing some really interesting rumours about Louette next year. Um, getting a residency in a major, major five-star hotel chain group. Oh, wow. Um, when artists start to get residencies, prices really we're, we're start to it. rise. We're talking Mayfair, Park Lane, very, very, very prestigious big. locations. We have lots of wall paintings by Louette. Yeah. They come through. They're getting harder and harder to get, yeah. but a, a coffee table is, is a very, very special piece. I must admit, one of the words I'm scared of whenever I get anything is unique. Because mm. you've got nothing to compare it to. Mm. If I've got five tables and they all sold for 4,000 pounds, 5,000 pounds, that is the value of the table. But thanks for your help as usual. Pleasure. Thanks, Cheers, Lawrence. Ben. Great nice to see catch you, Lawrence. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Hi there, how can I help you today? I've come to a pony ring. Okay, no problem. Do you want to pop it through? Thank you. Thank you. She's off. James has had an email from Christine, whose high-performance race car failed to deliver at Silverstone. Well, it proves that the car's running now, so that's uh, a great thing from our, from our point of view. She's off at break next week. She thinks she's competing in this video, by the way. <laughs> Got to take your hat off to her. Pulling into the pits by the looks of things. All we need is a bit of Fleetwood Mac in the background and we'll be well away. Unbelievable. But she's got it going, that's the main thing. Claudia's heading to see expert Mark to get a second opinion on the signed Shirley Bassey handbag. I haven't actually dealt with anything like this before, you know, with a handbag that isn't branded and it's signed, you know, by a dame. Um, so hopefully he'll be able to guide me and sort of, you know, what the secondary market is for something like that. Hi Mark. Hello, Claudia. Finally I get to meet you. Here it is, how are you? Mm. Lovely I'm to meet you at last. Yeah, same, likewise. So what we got? Well, something I don't know exciting? if you can help, I hope you can help. It's a handbag. But yeah. this is a special handbag. This has been signed by Dame Shirley Bassey. Don't see a lot of them, you know. No. Dame. So what's the situation so with So basically, it? this bag belongs to a gentleman um, who lost his wife due to cancer last year. Bless him. And, um, and he wants to donate all the proceeds from what he can get from it to the, to the hospice because they really looked after her. Well, it, there's absolutely no question of its authenticity. Completely real. Yeah. There's some samples here, look. As you can see, her signature never changes. No. Okay. But no, it's very hard to find a dame. I haven't seen a dame. So she must write that on special occasions. Yeah, which is nice, isn't it, really, I think? Because she's such a good signer, she will sign for anyone. And she, you know, her signature on a photo or a page, you've got lots of album pages. The value of her signature doesn't stand as a lot, okay? I've never ever seen anything like that. No. And in memorabilia terms, anything that's unusual is the stuff that always sells. Lovely. Is that okay. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so for coming much. down, mate. It's oh, lovely. And it's lovely Thanks to meet you at last. And it really is. Likewise. Okay. All right. 
Take care. See you later. Bye. Bye. It does really mean a lot to me to try and raise a lot of money for Robin, or as much as I can. Um, so I'm really putting my heart into this, and I'm, uh, I'm hoping to get a good, uh, good result. In Cheshire, Christine is waiting for news from James. She wants to sell her race car for £30,000 so she can start her barn development. I'm looking forward to knowing the outcome, uh, good or bad, um, and um, we'll just see how it goes. I think we've done our research uh, in terms of the numbers. Um, we've spoken to people and, uh, who understand that sport far better than I do. Let's give Christine a call and uh, see where we are, see what we can do. Hello. Christine, hi, it's James here oh, from Prestige. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Look, thanks, um, thanks for the video. So it's all fixed and all working tickety-boo, yeah? Yeah, uh, it was just the ignition switch. Um, put a new one on, just started up and away it went. Okay. Um, just run through the numbers again. What is it you were trying to do and how much did you need to get to? The original thought process was that I would, um, and still would like to, sell the car uh, through your contacts. Um, or alternatively, that I'm able to take a loan against it. Okay. If if uh, you were to take a loan again it, against it, um, if you needed some cash raised quickly, what sort of number, numbers would you need? I think it would be in the region of seven, seven to 10,000. Okay, so that would help you out in the short term, well, would it? Well, what I'd do is I'd use that to, to throw against the, the, the development that, um, the, you know, the work that's imminently to be carried out. Okay. Well, look, I can intuit at that at this moment in time, I haven't managed to sell it, but I have got interested parties that would like to see the car. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you. That's a real, real move. That's a real move in the right direction. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to suggest to you mm. is that we, um, we loan you the 7,000 that you need. That's great. Thank you. Would that help? Yeah, that's absolutely incredible. Thank you very much. And I'm quite sure that once people see the car um, and see what they're getting for their money, uh, that then, you know, we'll get some, some offers on it. I'm quite sure. Lovely. Thanks, Christine. OK, speak soon. Cheers. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Well, that's, uh, yeah, she, uh, she seemed quite upbeat, actually, you know. I mean, I think ideally she would like to sell it. But at the moment, it's a £7,000 loan. Not an issue at all. There's a lot of people interested in the car. Quite sure that people will fall in love with it as I did um, once they can see and feel it. Um, and in the meantime, some cash in the bank. So, yep, yeah, happy girl today. His unique way of running staff appraisals has done nothing to lift James's spirits. How many days in the week, James, do you actually have a good day? Days in the week? I don't think I do have a whole good day. I remember sort of little bits and pieces of a day that were once good a long time back. You need to do meditation. Meditation? I don't think I need medica medication. A Freudian slip. Actually, I do need medication. I don't need meditation. I need medication. That's exactly <laughs> what I need. You actually need to feel good from the inside before you can actually make anything feel better. I could do with a lobotomy right now. Thank you. Bye-bye. entrepreneur Paul is back at the pawn shop. Ideal scenario is cash transferred into the business account, we get going. Simple as that. James has come to a decision on whether to lend him £40,000 for his antique diamond tiara. I'm hoping Paul will be happy with the news that we're going to give him. Um, we have spent a lot of time on this item and uh, we can't really do any more than we've done. Paul's here for Hi, Paul. You all right? How you doing, mate? James, good to see you again. Great to see you. And you? How Thanks you been? For... I've been really well. Tell me again, what were you looking for in terms of the numbers again? Well, as discussed before, I need 40k to get the business off the ground. Um, but clearly, you've done your research, and this is the, the lean forward moment where I, 
I find out. Uh, yeah, well, I'll lean back. <laughs> where you, where, where you, where yeah. you uh, tell me what you think it's actually going to be worth on the market from a trade point of view. Okay. Well, look. Um, firstly, I just want to say that in terms of its quality, it's right out there at the top of its game, really, in respect of the diamond content and the way it's been put together. So that's a good bit of news uh, for good you. Old, good old great great grandmother. Yeah. So she, well, she had exceptional taste. That's for sure. One thing I have noticed during our handling of the piece is that the actual neck itself is quite small, mm -hmm. um, but for a not considerable amount of money it could be extended. altered and extended, so there's that um, to consider. Now you're looking for 40,000. I am. Um, I can tell you that as a loan we can potentially lend you up to 50,000. Um, so right. your 40,000 no problem if you needed a little bit extra it's always there for you so okay that's fantastic news that's news I've been waiting for um, being quite pragmatic James um, no disrespect but I don't want to pay interest on more than 40k very sensible well, I don't need it at the moment James. very sensible but if we can come to a, a reasonable deal on that James I, I, th I think in principle Lovely. We, we have a deal it's been a pleasure doing business with you James and it you really has got a deal done, big number, £40,000, a really exceptional piece to have in our, um, in our little collection, lovely. Absolutely brilliant news, chapter one's finished, we've got the design, we've got the business set up, everything's in place, chapter two's going to start now, chapter three's going to be the exciting bit, when uh, I walk into James and say, I'd like my tiara back please. <laughs> In North London, aspiring DJ Simon is waiting to hear whether Lawrence has been able to sell his Louette pop art table. So to be honest, it would be great to get the cash quickly, um, but if it's not the value I'm looking for, then I'll, I'll hold on to it. I've just got a final offer on Simon's coffee table by Louette, and it's a fair offer, in my opinion it is. Hello. Hiya, Simon. It's Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence. How are you? I'm good. Sorry. It's taken a bit of a while to actually come to a price. The problem we had is Louette at the moment is, is a well-respected artist. Right, yeah. Um, and his work's going up, but it's difficult with artists to know whether it's going to keep going up. Absolutely. Or come down again. Yep, yep. Also, uh, the fact it being a coffee table, saying that, we have now discovered that um, it can be put on the wall. So, um, what sort of figure were you looking for? Um, I know I've been fairly cagey about this, but mm. I'm hoping for somewhere in the region of four, four and a half. And you'd be happy with that, would you? I'd be really happy with that, yeah. Um, We've got an offer. Okay. Um, so, what I'd like to offer you is... Um, I don't know how you feel about six grand. You're kidding me? No, well, that's the figure we've come up with. Looking at all the work he's done... Yeah, no, that's brilliant. I'm really happy. Oh. I'm pleased. So you're happy with that? Yep, yep, definitely. You've got a deal. Fantastic. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll organise the paperwork over the next few days, get it down to you, and then we'll get that sorted. All right, brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Lawrence. Cheers, Simon. Look nice after to yourself. You, yeah. you too. Cheers. Bye-bye. OK, bye. Brilliant. Six grand. Perfect. Yeah, I'm really, really pleased. I'm really pleased. It's nice when you get that. You can actually sense in his voice that he was happy. So it's uh, good news all around. Seller of the Shirley Bassey handbag, Robin, has arrived at the Weybridge branch. He wants to donate any money raised to the hospice that helped care for his late wife in her final days. Hopefully it will be the real thing and hopefully we can get some, some money for the Phyllis Tuckwell charity. I've got real mixed feelings today because it's very emotional. She's absolutely okay. happy for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And I'm just hoping that I've done all my you know, work right and uh, make him an offer that he's happy with. Hello. Hello, Robin. How are Lovely you? Lovely to see you again. And you. Are you all right? Yes, thank you. Good. Yes. Take a seat. I've been looking forward to seeing you. Well, I'm intrigued to know what you think. It has been a tricky item to value. The bag is unbranded. Mm. And I found that the fact that Dame Shirley Bassey has actually signed it as Dame Shirley Bassey um, is quite unusual. 
She doesn't normally do that. No sort of. Is um, it a real signature? It is a real signature. Yeah, I'm happy to confirm that. The only thing is because the handbag is unbranded. Mm. Um, the, the value isn't in the bag, it's purely literally the in the signature, it is purely in the yeah. signature. So I have reached a decision. Um, I know that you would like £500, but we're going to double it and offer you a thousand. It's brilliant, thank you. Yeah, are you happy with that? Very, yes. Don't, you're going to make me cry. That's lovely. Okay, good. I'm glad you're pleased with that. It's oh, a good cause. You. You're welcome. Stop making me cry. <laughs> this is work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really pleased. I'm happy that you're pleased with the yes. uh, offer. So um, it's been lovely seeing you. And Thank you so uh, much. take care. And you. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Bye now. Bye. Great result, really pleased to make Robin happy with the offer. Um, yeah, it's uh, completely pulled on my heartstrings big time. We've done this, obviously, for Julie. I'm sure that she'll be absolutely delighted. Two counts, really. The, the hospice get something from it, and somebody will finish up with a bag that they can treasure um, uh, as a fan of Dame Shirley Bassey. So um, I think it's turned out brilliantly.